Welcome to my series on how do you actually grieve? And today I'm going to be talking about Dr. Rando's six R's of mourning. I'm Christy Bundukmara. I'm a psychiatric nurse practitioner with over 20 years of clinical experience. And I have experienced intense grief of losing three children over the course of 17 years. And I am turning my pain into purpose. I'm going through a 45 days of grief journey so that I can share with you, how do you actually grieve? How do you actually go through these processes of these theories? Um, so Dr. Rando has these six R's and many of the theories kind of have either steps or kind of elements that, that you go through, you know, mixed over time. Um, they all have a very common theme in the beginning of accepting the loss. And I know even with the, you know, five day, uh, stages of grief and, and that initial denial, but also sometimes that actually takes a little bit of a step. Like you can physically and intellectually know that that person is gone, but what they're talking about here and recognizing the loss is like that acceptance, the acceptance of now I've got to go through pain and change and change is hard. Pain we often avoid change is hard. So, that first R in Dr. Rando's theory is to recognize the loss. The second is react. And I, I would be kind of careful with this word react because, you know, typically we um, want to have some, some control over our reaction. But a lot of this could also be cultural. And I'm also going to go through kind of cultural uh, practices of grief. Um, unfortunately, for me, because I am an actually a very emotional person, um, but obviously in a white culture where we feel um, reserved, that we have to kind of stay in c control of our reaction. Um, when I was a missionary in Haiti, I went to a Haitian funeral and the outpouring of pain and grief at this funeral was eye-opening to me one, the way that people experience grief, but also just that freedom to let it out. Um, and so if you feel like you have that freedom to let it out, um, I think that is a very good process. I let it out, but I let it out kind of privately. Um, and if you're following my grief journey, you'll see, you know, I even kind of punch on a punching bag sometimes, walk. We do need movement to kind of process that grief. But I think what happens in all cultures is when the, the grief period is culturally over, which I would say in this culture, in the American culture, you know, a couple weeks of, you know, not being able to function is perfectly acceptable. But after that, there's this expectation to get back to work, to do your responsibilities, to be grieving on your own. And then even um, from the DSM criteria, you know, grief is supposed to not be impacting your life after one year. And uh, those of you that know that you have experienced intense grief, that's not possible. Um, so uh, Dr. Rando's theory, recognize, react, um, then reflect. I love this um, reflecting and I call it controlled grief. This is when you get out those pictures, you cherish the time. If you begin to cry as you think about those memories, it's okay. Like you've got to feel that pain um, in that reflection. Now her fourth R is relinquish. And I can tell you, as soon as I read the word, I was like, that's not working for me. Okay. So remember, if you're going through this process, um, and you are, and you read something and it actually triggers you, evaluate why it's triggering you. And for me, the word relinquish means to let go, um, and move on. And I will never be the same. I, 
obviously love my children dearly and will not see them this side of heaven. And so to use the word relinquish um, just didn't sit right with me. But there is, there is truth to this. And we, we even if a, a word triggers you, try to dig deeper. Like, what are you supposed to do with that word? What are you supposed to do with your feeling of that word? Because our, our initial response is, oh, heck no, I'm holding on to this. And I do believe that you need to hold on to it and you need to uh, reflect, process, and, and I say cherish. Um, and so I think she was, you know, trying to use obviously all our words, um, but, you know, kind of relinquishing some of that pain and, that, you know, letting go of some of that pain. And that you have to do by processing. Uh, the fifth R is readjust. And there's other theories that we've discussed that kind of talk about this. But this is, uh, you know, when the intensity of that grief begins to decrease, then you start readjusting to your life. Um, and the only way you can decrease that intensity is by feeling that pain. And so again, back to, you know, my theory of this controlled grief, like you have to actually take the time to um, grieve and feel that pain. And then her last R is to reinvest. And I actually love uh, this R word um, because w that is a conscious choice. And I, and I know there's many uh, people who have lost children that follow me and the, the pain is so bad we get into maybe even clinical depression. And you don't want to reinvest in this life. Um, and, you know, in, in, and this is why I go back to the mentally strong method of separating things. The spiritual conflict, like if I truly believe that my children are happy and content in heaven, why wouldn't I just want to be there with them? And I know there's some of you that, that think about suicide. That's not an option, please. That is, that is a choice. And that's why when we're going through this grieving process, we've got to put things in the right category because it can all get meshed up with the pain. I love her last R word, reinvest. After you adjust, to life without this person. You, you actually take the time to reinvest in your next chapters of your life. They're different. Change is hard. But the choice to reinvest is yours. So, uh, review of Dr. Rando's theory, recognize your loss, react, reflect, that goes along with um, my theories of controlled grief. Relinquish some of that pain, okay? Um, so I'm gonna kind of change this. It's like relinquish some of that pain so that you can readjust and reinvest. The best word in her uh, six R's is reinvest. Figure out how to invest in your, your next chapters of your life. I believe that you are mentally strong.